Hi guys and welcome to Journey to Journeyman episode number 29. On this exciting episode, I've done something that I've never done before. Uh, I had a bad worn out lead screw and so I make a brand new lead screw which has left hand Acme threads on it. Also it has flats on it uh, for to turn it. And I also make on this episode the brass, actually I'm lying to you, bronze. Bronze nut. Here's the old worn out bronze nut and the new one. And I tell you, um, the, there was a lot of trials and tribulation to get this thing cut. But it works out. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. If you want to see the trials and tribulation on how I do that, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Well, time for me to use a steady rest for the first time. So take off the guard and um, let's get a little lube on here. I had to go take this <clears throat> this little piece out, get a little lubrication on there, and now she tightens up, tightens up nice and tight. Somehow this is living inside of here. I gotta try to get it out. The small end of this lead screw. Uh, where it is threaded is three eighths of an inch. So what I decide to do is cut the three eighths inch and use a three eighths inch collet to hold it in the lathe. And now on the other end, I need a center in there to hold it in the other end. Now I would prefer to use my South Bend lathe because it's just uh, more rigid and more capability, but I don't have a following rest for it, so I have to use my Atlas 618. And here I'm marking off where I need a transition. Now one of the things I realized right off the bat is once I get this steady rest on, there's about, oh, a three inch gap between where the rest is and where the tool is. And I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. It turns out later on it, it, it will be a problem. Now as I see this first cut, it looks so even all the way across, I thought, well, it's not going to be a problem, it's going to cut nicely. So I'm cutting 10 threads per inch, and I had to do the change gears. So I really had to look that up and make sure, and then test, you know, to make sure I had the 10 threads per inch, and it is. Now here you can see the difference between where the cutting tool is and the rest is. As I take more and more cuts, I notice that the threads at the beginning look different than the threads, you know, further along the cut. I am taking extremely light cuts like uh, two thousandths or so, so there's a lot of passes. So there's an issue between the threads here and the threads here. These aren't quite as fully formed, so somehow my steady rest is not working like it's supposed to. Now I think I'm going to try to switch this, put it on that side, re-catch the threads, and see if that'll help. So I turn the quick change tool post around, put it on the other side, and what I don't know right now is I didn't tighten up that tool. You'll see here in a second. Thankfully, the tool didn't break and I didn't mess up my work. The following rest looks like it was 
designed to work with a lantern style tool post. So I started off with the 618 and with a steady rest, I mean a following rest. And I, I tried it with a steady rest, a following rest, and it just wasn't working. And I accidentally crashed it just a little and it tore up those teeth. So now I'm out of being able to thread on that. So, so I switched over to the South Bend, but as you can see, there's no following rest on there. I don't have a rest. And I mistakenly thought that if I just keep going over it and over it, that it would eventually, you know, get the middle to be right, but it hasn't. So, here's what I've done. So, since I broke the 64 tooth gear, went on eBay, got another one. We're going to try to do this again with the following rest, but using it a different way and hopefully get this thing fixed. So let's switch this out and get to working again. Well, with the steady rest set here and the tool there, I've been just catching the thread again and going down and just, it's been pulling, oh, it's been pulling metal out of there, but it sure is taking a long time and a lot of passes. I wish this steady rest and the way I've got this set up was a little bit better, but that's the best I can do right now, and hopefully I can get this thing done. Okay, so this is what I've been doing. I've been taking it down here, and since I can't start at the beginning, I pick up the thread. And so what I'll do is I will start, engage it, stop, and now I know I can roll this in because it is timed correctly. So I roll it in, then I start it, and I turn it to the number that I know, which the number I'm on, which is 80. And I've been doing spring passes, so I turn it on, go to 80, and let it do a spring pass right now. And I've been doing spring pass after spring pass. But at the end is where it gets a little interesting on how I've been doing it. I'm in back gear and going slow, but when I get to the end, I use my variable speed to slow it down even more. It's still cutting, but just very little. And now as I get toward the end, I start slowing it down. Now I'll slow it down even more. And now I'm going to, when I get real close, get to the last thread, I'm going to back it out, like right now, and then I disengage it. And now I roll it back to the beginning. I'll engage, stop, now re, re put this back in. We'll do, do another spring press. I'll turn it on, go to my 80, and we'll just let it go again. And what it's doing is it's doing little minute shavings. Very, very thin. But I'm getting real close to where I think that I'll switch the thing back around and start it from the beginning and just continue to do pass after pass until I finish it. And with the cutting tool on the right side, you can see the locking handle hits the headstock. Well, I flipped the thing back on that side, and I'm starting it at the beginning. And I'm taking about five more, maybe ten thousandths. And this is the third or fourth spring pass, so we'll see what's going on. Okay, I've taken it off to test it. And what I have is... This is the thing that I tapped left-handed with the uh, tap that I have. And it goes on, oh, it starts getting tight right here. That's about as far as I can get that. And that now this is just aluminum with the tap that I tapped it with. And I use this kind of as my guide. However... I know that I am so close because here is the here is the um, the thing that is supposed to go in and it 
with the other one it was so loose on this one it's got a little bit of play in it too and this one this one goes the whole way no worries at all so what because that's so loose on there I know that I'm gonna now what I'm going to do is before I cut any more on here I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap my piece of bronze that I have and make sure that I don't overshoot the number on this but I'm extremely happy that it goes on there so that means I am real close to having the lead screw that I need so once again I'm close boys and girls very 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 close okay I have to show this here's the the real lead screw and um, if you look there I didn't measure twice I didn't measure that twice so what I have to do is I'm gonna have to take that one and bring that back some bring that shoulder back some now down on this end I've got plenty of room extra so what I'll do is get on there carry these threads down as much as I need to so that I have the correct length of threads here and I also have the correct length down here and once again boys and girls that goes you back to the measure twice and cut once theory I'm gonna learn that one of these days one of these days I don't really know a lot about this but this is with the bronze I got from McMaster car um, I am going to attempt to make this out of this they feel about the same weight I mean they're pretty heavy pretty heavy I don't know if it's the exact same I just got the cheapest bronze I could get and this is what it is like I said I don't know what that is but uh, we'll um, have to take off about 41 thousandths off the diameter get the length right get that hole through it so let's get started surface finish is incredible just beautiful that'll turn into a mirror if I try to polish it Wow love it okay good it's not turning a taper okay let's get this thing machined got to take it down to 999 so, 29 thousandths has to come off. About a half a thousandth to polish out. That's about what I'm looking for. Yep. Okay, so so the diameter is dead on. I've got that little um, center mark there. I'll probably machine out at the end. So what I'm going to do now is let's see. We'll take this off and drill and tap it and then we'll put it back in a lathe to face it to length to get it to the right length um, and then over to the horizontal mill to cut the little angle on it 
So I was just about to abandon this idea and then I started thinking maybe I can abandon this idea of the four jaw and taking it over to the drill press but uh, what I did was thought I need to have this you know level need to have this in here and not tilted and so I do believe that uh, I got it now I got this four jaw leveled and now it's about a two thousandths taper so I'll just keep tapping that and try to get it perfectly flat and then I'll drill it out I called another audible on it I'm gonna try it on the drill press and what I did was scribe the line here um, and scribed it down through the center and now I lined it up here and because of this overhang I'm gonna try to stick something under here uh, as I push so it you know I got this pretty tight but I don't want it to push down there so I'm gonna stack up some stuff under this I don't have any machinist jacks that's what I really need to do the job properly but I'm gonna try to just stuff some stuff under there Guys, I am realizing that this stuff is extremely grabby. Well, just as an FYI, guys, they say that brass and bronze is a grabby metal. I'm here to tell you, it's so grabby that I am stepping it up through every little step drill to get up to tap drill size because it's actually trying to pull it up out of that vise. I thought it'd be pushing it was the problem, but it, it, it'll actually try to pull it out of there. So can't take big bites with these steel drills they have to be sharpened differently or you gotta take it slow it is grabby 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 this is the one before tap drill size and here's tap drill size hopefully hopefully you can get through there without tearing this part up Wow, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do that. Yowza. All right. Now let's tap it. Now here's the part I got to be real careful on. This is left-handed. So I need to start this this way. Okay, so here she is, and uh, of course it's left-handed, so it just makes things look weird when you do it. Okay, so now the next couple parts to it, and we'll finish this piece up and color it done. All right, so I just went and cut this part off of the at the bandsaw. Now we'll take this to dimension and bring this to dimension too so that we'll lose that mark there. And so let's let's do that. Now I'm not sure exactly how precise this needs to be. So what I'm doing here is just taking a measurement from the hole and I'm going to make the same on that one right there. going to clean that up a little bit. Alright, now the last part on the lathe. So I need to get that down to the right size now. Well I got it the length now on here 
Now I just got to get there's a pretty nice size radius on that. I'm, I think I'm going to try that with a uh, maybe a file. I think that looks too bad. So here's the leftover. Um, when you take a look at it, they are same height, same diameter. Nice little radii on them. Um, I still need to make the little side cut on it. I want to do that on the mill, but. Um, now I can finish up the lead screw because I know that this is the one I'm trying to match. And so, quite pleased with it. Okay, due to technical difficulties of not knowing how to measure, I need to move these threads down about that far or half inch or so. So what I'm going to do is pick up the thread and then I'm going to come down here and just work back and forth to bring those uh, the threads there. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. I need to take off a few, skim off a little bit more just to fit the uh, lead screw. Okay, so here I am working with the last two inches trying to get those done. So I engage because I have it timed. I roll it in. It's about 50 on there. So I crank it in just a little bit. Let it slowly go down to the end. cutting very little but that's, that's all I need right now and I back it out disengage it roll it back down and while it's out I engage with the thread dial engage it now I roll it in and just kind of let it ride I've been doing this oh five six seven eight nine ten times <laughs> So I've been doing this several times and I'm just letting it slowly kind of clean up those last threads which the nut had a hard time going over the last couple of threads. Hey Ty. Guys. Guys. Okay. It is tight. But I finally got it to go on so just a little bit more cleanup a couple of little cleanup passes on it yay all right we're almost done with this project okay this thing fits on here so nice I did hear you yep but that's okay Sure. <laughs> All Buddy, right. It's a so love this you. Is, I love you too. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, it's basically the last couple threads. That's it. So the last three or four threads. So I'll throw that in there, clean those up. Wow, fantastic. So, last three threads. All right, guys. <laughs> I was able to do it on my Atlas 618. That feels so good. No play in it. So, it's not tight, and there's uh, no wiggle. Love it. to make sure that that rolled up on there like it does and it does so with those there got the right length down here just need to cut those thread back the thread back maybe just a little bit for that and need to get that cut and then trim that to size and polish that out and that little angle here we need to put in there and we need to make a hole for that, drill that hole. But the, the Acme part of this is, is complete. 
Okay, what I need to have is uh, the shoulder come back here, and it looks like about an inch and five uh, sixteenths. Got that machine down the size. My, now my next one is going to be for the threads, and that goes back one half and one thirty second. So down here, I got it set up so a half is going to be five hundred thousand. So one, two, five. So that's the half inch, and then a thirty second. Uh, one thirty second is. Uh, 31.2 so we'll go 31 and we'll call that 31 right there and now we'll make our mark and this is what I like to call a sanity check okay that looks it looks like what we're doing we're working on the threaded part there so we got to get that down to one quarter I think it's quarter 28 so quarter fine all right now I really tighten this die up in this thing and I didn't realize that's gonna cause me some trouble here in a second and not because it's tight because it's tight and crooked Totally trashed. Totally. <sighs> okay, I gotta do a plan B on this. I'm gonna have to drill and tap that. Okay, so I don't know what happened to these threads here. I must have had to die in a crooked or something. So I took some of my. Um, quarter inch stock same type of drill rod and now what I'm going to do is put a quarter twenty um, hole in there drill quarter drill and tap quarter twenty put that in there and we'll red loctite it in there permanent loctite that baby in there and then we'll face it to length now that threaded rod that you saw me holding I threaded that rod with the same die that uh, messed up the first time around Okay, I am so glad I checked this. Um, for quarter 28, it's a number 3 drill instead of a number 7 for quarter 20. So we got a number 3 in there, which is our tap drill size. And that's our final size before we tap. if you can see the threads down in there but all right that's threaded all right this is operation fix my mistake and putting the red loctite that's the that's the permanent stuff and all right let's get this in there now I threaded that extra long so I had plenty of material to work with all right. Now, as a technique, anytime I'm messing with threads, I try to put a nut on so that when I'm done messing with the threads, the nut will kind of act like a die when it uh, when you take it off in case it's gnarled up at all. And in this case, it came right off. No gnarling at all. So here's my setup. I've got my little machinist vise here clamped down. It's been made perpendicular here it's been made straight and now i've got a v-block here inside of that holding this the lead screw and i've got the collar on there as a stop so it should hit it there every single time and now i'm going to touch that off and once i do that i'll lock that axis off and now i'll just cut it like this here we go now after this initial cut i realized that it kind of is not flat 
you know, if you look at that uh, long piece like a teeter-totter, the heavy end was down. So I repositioned it and made sure when it cut across it, it was cutting flat. Ouch, that got hot. Now I used the depth from my knee just using the dials and I was just double checking it with the mic and it's dead on. And now I use my machinist uh, square and a one, two, three block to index at 90 degrees. Okay, check this side, put the other flat side down, and we'll just lather, rinse, and repeat. All right, the last side. Hopefully I don't mess this up now, because that would be bad. All right, that was the last pass, and now the moment of truth. I did it. <laughs> All right, so that looks great. One more milling operation down here, and what I need to do here, this is the old one. I need to get that milled in. So I'll do that, and then, the last polishing and cleaning up on the lathe. Okay, so what I did here is I got the vise V block, got it down, and I made sure that it is indicated in, it's dialed in within less than a thousandths going that way. And now we'll take this little bitty eighth inch end mill and we'll start making that groove in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cutter, bring it up to right here, where it just touches a piece of paper and then I am going to take half of the width of the cutter and half the distance of that and that'll center it up and now we'll make our, our cut. Alright, this uh this washer goes on there. So I think I think that's done. And here she is hot off the press prior to deburring. Now to go deburr it. Okay, a couple of more steps and it's gonna be done. What I'm gonna do is polish this, and I'm gonna cut that to size and round it over, drill a hole in it, and she's done. Right now I want to get that cut off and get this end faced off. Alright, I'm quite happy with that. One more little operation on there to drill a hole in here. Okay, <clears throat> the final step in here is to put a hole for this thing. So I need to know where that hole is and the size of it. So I am going to attempt to get that out of there. And uh, let's see if we can get this pin out of here. Hey, that's shimmed on there. All right. I don't have a taper dream or anything, but I just kept stepping the drill up until it would fit in there like that. It won't be perfect, but at least, uh, at least it'll hold it in place. All right, so 
Here is the old uh, lead screw. And uh, here is the new one. Well, guys, I am playing it cool, but I couldn't be happier with this baby. I mean, this, that's a huge deal for me to make something like this. And uh, time to get that baby on the machine. Okay, the final process on this one. I took this um, left-handed tool that I made and I put it in here because I need a vertical reference. So that was my vertical reference that that was set. Now on the angle, what I did was I took and got the angle from the old piece here and you could see if I were to set this up in here that that face is flat. Actually it's not. I'm going to have to redo that. But what I need is this face to be flat like that. And then when I go across that it'll cut it flat. I'm glad I looked at that. I gotta check that angle out. But when I come back um, this will be at the right angle and we'll mill it off. Okay, now she's set up to where when I look down that, that is straight. So I had messed up the angle there. I got it right now. And what I'm going to do is now uh, touch off of here and I'm going to bring that back 250 thousandths. We should be done with this thing. Hi guys, just like to share some lessons learned. Um, a, a couple of things, when you're making these long threaded rods, you're definitely going to need a following rest, especially if you are using drill rod, which is really hard. Um, and you have to know how to use your following rest. I use mine two different ways on my Atlas 618. That thing was a little champ. It uh, it cut this is 15 inches and this is at 18 so it can only do 18 between between centers but it took this 15 inches of rod here and threaded it up like a champ took a lot of passes and a lot of time but uh, it, it did it um, the other thing is when you are copying a part from an old machine you may want to see if they have not doctored it uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna go back right now Right now, I'm just going to get the machine together because this will work. But they took and uh, changed theirs, and I thought it was factory until I looked on eBay at one for sale and saw. Actually, I start off by looking at the parts diagram, and I saw it was different after I had finished it. And uh, so um, then I looked at eBay, and sure enough, this is supposed to be a 3 8 and 24 threads per inch. Uh, they had threaded theirs. They must have screwed up the threads and then made it uh, quarter 28, which is, it'll hold it and all that, and I'm going to leave that for now, but I'll probably go repair the end of that and make it correct by the, by the factory. The other thing I learned is I've never worked with bronze. Guys, this stuff is grabby. I've heard people say that on there, and they change the drill bits, uh, the angles on them, so it's not so grabby. This stuff is grabby grabby. Um, just be careful in your drill press. Uh, drill press that is. It mine wanted to pull it out of there. I was shocked at how grabby it was. So I had to go with real small increments and in stepping it up to get it through there and get it threaded. And also on the the little angle that I cut on there, I cut it a little bit deeper because I had measured it with calipers and uh, that was inaccurate. So I probably went. Uh, five thousandths into it a little more there five or ten thousandths into it but that's not going to affect it at all so overall I really am happy at how this turned out and for those of you who are wondering what's gonna what this is for you're gonna find out pretty soon 
what this is all for. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.